Hello again, good people. So in this video, we're heading for home, and uh, Miss John Kalar is in Kimber, where we went to after we left the Barossa. We scuttled through the top end of South Australia and ended up in Kimber, uh, which is very nice. And um, it's one of the places where we got some silo art as well, which you've already seen. And this most amazing place is the Bunda Cliffs. This is sunrise. Uh, it's out on the Nullarbor. Um, you can see from this that we are camped only metres from the Nullarbor Cliffs. And over there is the Air Highway and the Nullarbor proper. And there's some sand dunes and what have you. And this was very foggy and you can see the fog is actually cascading over the cliff like a like a phantom waterfall, if you like, which was pretty interesting to see. And it's pretty amazing, these cliffs. Uh, all along the Nullarbor, there are these beautiful cliffs. Um, pretty dangerous, really. There's no fencing or anything like that to stop you from falling over the edge. So, yeah, you need uh, a little bit of care. But they are absolutely uh, fabulous and beautiful. And at long last we got to Esperance and on its day can there be any place anywhere that is more beautiful than Esperance. This is just right in the middle of town overlooking the town beach and these are some of, just some of the pics from around the place and we got out to Lucky Bay and uh, a few other places, um, Condingham and some of the beaches along there and then we went out to the west side as well and uh, the weather was glorious and the beaches were superb it was just pretty bloody good really and in Esperance or just outside of Esperance there is a rendition life-sized replica of the British Stonehenge and this is how Stonehenge would have looked except probably not in pink granite uh, 5,000 years ago it's an amazing piece of work uh, and very very beautiful and they were generous enough to 
let me fly my drone over it because there wasn't anybody else around when we got there. Um, you're not really supposed to fly your drones there. Um, so the first thing that strikes you about this is being a life-size replica is how small it is. You sort of expect Stonehenge to be large, but it's not, but it is quite tall. And, um, you know, when you reflect on how it was done what, three, four, five thousand years ago with the granite being carted out of Wales, um, it's pretty amazing. And this has standing stones which let the sunlight in from um, the winter solstice and then on the other side, the summer solstice, one in daylight and one at sunset. And it's quite an amazing thing and, and it was one man's passion. Unfortunately, he didn't have the wherewithal to, uh, to finish off the job, but other people did. And look, it's a very inexpensive, very interesting uh, thing. And if you're in Esperance, you really, really should go. It's, it's pretty fascinating. And after we left Esperance, we went to Albany and you can see on this map that we've really completed one circuit or as much as we could that COVID would allow us to do. We obviously weren't able to go north, um, which is unfortunate, but that's the next part of the journey uh, for the next six or seven months is to float around in the north of Western Australia and go and see Karajini and those sorts of things. So that's it, that's one lap of Australia done. Uh, we've got a few more that we're planning to do and uh, hopefully there'll be plenty of more videos and drone footage and, and photographs for you to look at and maybe inspire you to get out there. But the last thing I want to do today is just to pay tribute to somebody who passed away the other day and that's the spanner man from Bort, John Piccoli. Uh, John was 80 years old he had polio as a child and lived his life in a wheelchair, but he was one of Australia's great artists. He took up this sculpture and making statues and things out of spanners. And you can see some more of his work on one of my earlier videos. But as I say, he was really one of Australia's great artists. And uh, we were privilege to uh, spend half an hour or so with John and then another hour or two in his garden looking at some of this stuff that he had done and uh, yeah Bort is going to miss him he must have brought in a hundred thousand people into that area um, over the time of his creations and uh, the world will be a slightly sadder place for his passing never mind R.I.P. John